All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're talking about the Minnesota Vikings in tonight's video. Now, it's been way too long since our last Vikings video, uh, but nonetheless, I was very surprised to see the odds makers having your guys' win loss projection or the over under at six and a half. Um, that's really surprising to me. It really is. Now, I'm not saying Minnesota, no matter who they deploy at starting quarterback, no matter what you know week it is or whatever, you know, JJ comes in week four, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Minnesota is going to be a semi-competitive team, regardless of who the quarterback is this upcoming year. You know, I think a lot of people forget last year, Kirk Cousins, Minnesota started really poorly, really poorly. And, you know, when Kirk went down, I believe you guys were four and four, but clearly, you know, no matter how the success of Detroit, no matter the success of Green Bay or any other team in the NFC, you know, if Kirk Cousins plays all of last season, if he doesn't go down with an injury halfway through the year, even with the slow start, you guys make the playoffs, right? Minnesota's roster is really talented. Now, once again, you know, Sam Darnold's interesting to me. J.J. McCarthy's even more interesting to me. But I have a hard time believing, even in the NFC North, the Minnesota Vikings being a six-win football team. I, I just, I really don't see that happening. But the good news is, as J.J. McCarthy said himself, we're focused on progress. We're not focused on this quarterback race. We're not focused on this quarterback camp battle. We're thinking long-term. J.J. McCarthy, a couple months ago, was drafted number 10 overall, and that's the highest quarterback selected in Minnesota Vikings history. So... We're going to be talking a little bit about camp. We're going to be talking about your defense. Uh, we're going to talk about your whole team because we haven't made a Vikings video in way too long. So welcome back to the channel. Hope you guys enjoy it. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button if you haven't already. Vikings fans, we could try and get this video to 100 likes. I'll greatly appreciate that. Um, today's big day because this was the first time we have seen J.J. McCarthy take snaps with the ones. Now, it was the red zone period, so you don't have to freak out. Darnold's still taking the majority of the snaps. You know, this was bound to happen, uh, but it still is really intriguing um, or it's really exciting to me because you know, I forget who it was. There was some uh, guy on ESPN who came out here, I think it was yesterday, and said he thinks J.J. McCarthy is going to be the day one starting quarterback. And, you know, J.J. apparently has had good days. He's had bad days. He's had mediocre days. Um, Sam Darnold reportedly is whipping it across the field. You know, Justin Jefferson just said recently that he loves the progress and he loves how both quarterbacks are right now. But it's important to keep in mind, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I'm very glad that Minnesota signed Sam Darnold because, you know, like, you know, if you play for teams like the Jets or Carolina or you get drafted by one of those two teams, especially in the last like five couple of years, you're going to struggle. Like at this point, we know where you land matters. If you're a quarterback, if you're a head coach, those are the two more most important things. Like where you go and what they have certainly matters, right? Every year, every single draft class, we hear rumors before the draft's even close to starting. Like, ooh, Caleb might, you know, tell Chicago to not draft them, et cetera, et cetera. So JJ's been repping with the second team. So he's thrown to Jalen Naylor. He's thrown to Lucky Jackson. He's thrown to Tristan Jackson. Um, you know, the mechanics look more polished apparently in, than in spring. But you're going up against the first string defense still. Like you're still going up against the first string defense. So we know they're easing him into this process. But as far as like the Minnesota Vikings offensive success goes, well, you have a really solid, sturdy offensive line. And you brought in Aaron Jones. We're going to talk about him in just a second here. You still have one of the best wide receivers rising, young wide receivers in the NFL and Justin Jefferson. You have TJ Hawkinson, who apparently is ahead of schedule, might still not be. It's still up in the air if he's going to be ready to go in week one. But nonetheless, you still have TJ Hawkinson, a top 10 undisputed tight end in the National Football League. And then you have Jordan Addison, who just put together one of the sneakiest wide receiver or just in general rookie seasons last year because you know, Kirk Cousins got injured in week eight. Like you're running Nick Mullins, you're running Josh Dobbs, you're running Jared Hall, like you're running a bunch of different quarterbacks out there. But Jordan Addison still had a phenomenal rookie season, all things considered. So what's important here is, and the Vikings OC said this, you're you have 
it, even though up until today he was running and you know he's only running with the first team in red zone even though you're running with the second team you still have guys like dalton risner dan feeney questenberry you still have like these veterans who are protecting you uh in practice but you're going up against the first team defense so everything is going to be extremely quicker and we heard your offensive coordinator say he just thinks it's going to be easier once he is put into the first team offense, whether that's in training camp, whether that's preseason. You know, I, I think Wes said it, it's going to feel like playing the game on easy mode. I thought I had the quote here. Sorry, I don't have the quote. Um, but it, it should make whenever he gets implemented into the first team a lot easier because you're still going up against the first team defense and you're playing with your backup. So you don't have Jordan, right? You know, TJ is injured, but you don't have TJ. You don't have Aaron Jones. You don't have JJ. So uh, as far as JJ's progression goes, this has never really been a concern for me because the rookie quarterbacks are going to struggle. They're going to suffer, whether it's OTAs, whether it's rookie minicamp, whether it's training camp, preseason, the regular season, it just doesn't matter to me. So I'm thinking more long-term. JJ is extremely young. And you still have all these weapons. So I'm glad that you guys signed Sam Darnold because I always felt like, you know, like uh, Shanahan wanted him last year. You know, KOC wanted him this year. Like, I think offensive minded coaches, whether it's a coordinator or head coach, they know Sam Darnold can play. They know he's a great freaking backup QB. But even if he has to start the first month for you guys, you know, we're still thinking long term. So Six and a half wins. I'm hammering the over. I'm a port up reportedly today. It was a strong day for Sam Darnold in team drills. We saw Johnny Munt. We saw Jordan Addison get a couple of touchdowns. Uh, JJ McCarthy got the first two first. Sorry, this is from Kevin Seaford. I don't know why this is confusing me. This was the report. JJ McCarthy got the first two first team snaps that I've seen him this summer. Red zone drill. First play was an end around to Jordan Addison, and the second was a near pick. I think Theo Johnson dropped it, uh, the interception. But you know, it, it, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint, right? So TJ Hawkinson very well ahead. We're just kind of running through it here. That's actually all I had from trying to cap today defensively um i wanted to talk a lot more about the defense you guys brought in you know a lot of studs jonathan greener blake cashman you andrew van ginkle you still have ivan pace jr he had a really freaking strong rookie season you still got cam bynum harrison smith myra murphy um rest in peace 100 percent Kyrie jackson that was you know one of the worst news you could possibly ever hear whether or not you're a minnesota vikings fan and then obviously Blackman going down with the torn ACL, it sucks. But I do just want to say, I genuinely think cornerbacks are a little overrated. Um, I want to go young. I want to go cheap. I want to go athletic in my secondary. And even though it was a different group and it was a healthier group last season, there were still a lot of concerns with the Vikings defense. And Brian Flores made it work and actually turned the Vikings defense into above average and towards the end of the season. So we'll talk about the defense in another video on another day. Let me know if you guys want that video, but as always hit that like button, hit that sub button. Let me know who your week one starter prediction is going to be down below. Peace.